Hey, what's up? My name is Larry Stanley, and I am a sinner. <laughs> and if you're watching this, guess what? I don't mean to ruffle your feathers or surprise you, but you're a sinner too. And I really don't want to upset you when I tell you your mama's a sinner, your daddy's a sinner, everybody you know is a sinner, including your preacher and your pastor. They are sinners too. But what's great is... God uses sinners to deliver his perfect message. And that's what we're going to talk about this week in the Sunday morning message. to my attention that there was a scandal from a pretty big name preacher that I don't really watch, but he got involved in some stuff that he probably, alleged, I should say, he allegedly got involved in some stuff he probably shouldn't have been involved in if he actually did it. And I don't know if he did it or not. I'm not going to speculate. And I don't think it's fair if anybody else does either, whether he did it or, or he didn't do, do it. But the thing we have to remember is every preacher, every pastor, everybody you've ever seen deliver a message from God is a sinner. Now, I'm not saying sinning is okay. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's okay just to go sin and not repent and change your mind and not tell Jesus, sorry, not try to go without sin. But we're all going to sin. I mean, we are all going to sin. And that's what I'm wanting to remind you of. So when somebody we look up to when somebody we respect, when somebody we hold at a higher standard than everybody else sins, we act like it's a shock. We act surprised. We act offended. We act hurt. And we shouldn't be because they're human. They are human flesh. They are sinners. So we should always put our faith in God, not in a person. Our faith should go to God, not people. Always, 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 always. A person is going to let you down. God never will. And God uses imperfect people all the time. Since the beginning of time, he has used imperfect people to do his perfect will. The Bible is full of stories like this. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories, and I'm going to ask you to do a little homework this week and look these up because I'm just going to kind of paraphrase, and then we'll get to one scripture. So in Exodus 3 and 4, God tells Moses, Hey Moses, I'm picking you to go tell the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. And Moses says, wait, God, you got the wrong guy. Uh, what if the Israelites don't believe I actually met you? What if Pharaoh doesn't listen to me? I am not the right guy for this. Please, God, send, send me a sign that you're with me. Uh, after God sends him a sign, God sends somebody else. <laughs> and so God picks Aaron, Moses' his brother, to help him out. But Moses, who is talking one-on-one -on -one with God, is doubting God. Moses was a stubborn, imperfect human who God used to deliver his perfect message. In Samuel 2.11, we get the story of King David and Bathsheba. And so King David, when everybody's off to war, King David doesn't go this year. And he's on the top of his palace looking over his city. And he sees a beautiful woman bathing. And he calls her up. And they have a relationship that results in a child. And King David knows he, messes up, he messed up. He knows this was a mistake. So he tries to cover it up. So he calls her husband back from the battlefield. And he gets her husband drunk. and tries to get her husband to go home and have relationships with her. So that would cover up the pregnancy. And her husband doesn't do that. So King David sends Uriah, her husband, off to die in battle. So King David sinned. <laughs> he sinned and he had relations with a married woman. He tried to cover it up. He sent her husband off to die in battle. And it even tells us at the end of that chapter, this angered the Lord. But the Lord still used King David 
to deliver his perfect message. Now, back to the preacher that got involved in the stuff that he allegedly got involved in stuff he shouldn't be involved in. Whether he did that or not, it doesn't matter. As Christians, (laughs) you know, I'm not saying sin is okay. Sin is never okay, and sin angers God. But the fact of the matter is we're all sinners. That's why we need a Savior. Jesus didn't come for the righteous. If we were perfect and righteous, we wouldn't need a Savior. Jesus tells that. He came for the sinners. We are all sinners. Not one of us is better than any of the other. We are all sinners. We all are going to make mistakes. No matter what our job title is, no matter whether we're working for God or not, we are all sinners that are going to make mistakes. Now, as Christians, instead of condemning those people, we should lift those people up in prayer. We should pray for them. And if one of those people happened to be a preacher or a pastor, we should... (laughs) Really look at them and pray for them. And if they delivered a message to us that touched us, we just got to think that Holy Spirit was working through them. That message was meant for us from them through the Holy Spirit. But it was still, the Holy Spirit still used a sinful flesh human being to deliver that message. See what I'm saying? So God works through sin to reach us, but we're always sinful people. We are always sinful people. That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why we need our Savior. And this takes me to a story in John. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, and the law of Moses commands us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. The Pharisees get this woman and they bring her out in front of Jesus. She was caught in the act of adultery. And they're wanting to stone her to death. They're wanting to kill her. This was a sin back then and the law of Moses required them to be stoned to death. So they're putting Jesus to a test right here. Jesus, one, can either commend sin and say, no, it's okay, let's let her go. Or he can pick up a stone and throw it at her and be like, you sinned, you have to die because the law of Moses says this. The Pharisees think they have Jesus in a trap here, right? They think whatever he does, we've got him. He's either going to commit murder and throw a stone at this woman, or he's going to embrace sin. He's going to tell us sin is okay, in which case he's, he's a hypocrite. So we've got him. But that's not what Jesus does. What Jesus does is Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stopped down and wrote on the ground. Now, there's some debate about what Jesus wrote on the ground. The theory I like to go with, and there is no evidence to support anything that Jesus wrote on the ground, I will say this, but this theory is out there, is Jesus started writing the sins of every single person that was standing there wanting to throw a stone at this woman in his finger on the dirt. And as Jesus is writing the sins of these men, they begin to turn around and walk off ashamed. They realize their sin... They are sinners too, just like this woman they're wanting to stone to death. And they have no right to condone her, to throw a stone at her, to kill her for sinning because they are sinners too. If they throw a stone at her, stones should be thrown at them. And so they all start walking off. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman and still standing there. Jesus strained up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and leave your life of sin. That should be everyone's go. We should go and leave our life of sin behind us. But honestly, that is an impossible goal. We are all going to sin. We're all going to mess up. But the beautiful thing is, when Christ is alive inside of us, 
when God looks at us, he doesn't see that sin. That sin was paid for on the cross. Jesus took that sin with him when he took the nails in his hand. When he became sin on the cross, we were forgiving of our sins. So when we sin, we should support each other. The world's going to stereotype us. The world's going to call us hypocrites. The world's going to look at our mistakes and be like, ha ha, see, you're not a Christian. You're not living like you say you are. You know, you're a hypocrite. But what if we take a play, a play out of Paul's page? <laughs> what if we take a play out of Paul's playbook? And we say, yeah, I know I'm weak. I know I'm nothing. I know I'm a no good sinner. But you know what? I know Christ is alive in me and Christ lived a perfect life and Christ paid for my sin on the cross. And when God looks at me, he's not going to see my sin. He's going to see who I accepted as a savior and he's going to see the perfect lamb. So whether you're a preacher, a teacher, a pastor, a construction worker, um, real estate agent, whatever, an actor, whatever you may be, whatever your profession is, a businessman, whatever you are, <laughs> you are a sinner and you need Christ. And I hope you realize that we shouldn't hold any one person above others because of their job title. And just because God is using that person to deliver a message, one doesn't mean God is not speaking through that person. And it also doesn't mean that person will not go back to being a sinner later. We can be disappointed, we can be angry, we can feel hurt. But at the end of the day, we should feel love. <laughs> we should feel acceptance. Like when Jesus looked at that woman in John 8, we should realize your sin is not greater than my sin. And it's okay. Repent, change your mind, go forth and live a life of no sin. Go forth and try to sin no more. Go forth and make through your weaknesses see the glory of God.